Welcome back, listeners. This is... Uh, nope. Cut it. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> we need to cut that out. <laughs> this is... We need to cut that out. <laughs> uh, no, we'll just leave it in, I guess. This is episode 18. <laughs> and I'm your host, Andy Flory, and I spend way too much money on magic. Andy, do you like me? Yeah. Fact? Good. If we were on Eldrian, that would make me your bay of wishes. What is that? And that's my intro. My name is Brian Lethan, and I'm your co-host. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Please listen carefully. I didn't know where you were going with any of that. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. What do we have on the agenda today? We're going to talk about what happened this past weekend. What? <laughs> was it an, an event? It I just sounded it like there was drama. I left it open. <laughs> oh. Entry. Mysterious. Stay tuned for more about what happened this weekend. <laughs> Well, you know, maybe we could get a little personal with the folks and tell us what happened on the weekend, then maybe go into some magic events. Who knows? We'll leave it open. All right. All right. Leaving it open to interpretation. <laughs> and then we're going to go talk about the Mythic Championship this coming weekend, um, some deck lists that were submitted. Um, the Game Night deck lists were announced this afternoon on the Mothership. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, they also just announced a new unset. Unbelievable. <gasps> That's not an unset yet, so we're going to use that until that becomes an unset. Wait, Uh, unreally? Unreal. Uh, Excuse you. Uh, Excuse me? (laughs) Uh, And then finally, we have Command Fest Chicago coming up in three weeks? Yes, three three weeks. Mm -hmm. It is the... It's November 1st through the 3rd, so we are uh, one, two... We're less than three weeks out tree uh and that is where we will start at no that's where we'll end at we will start we could with... start there do we want to just <laughs> let's let's see if we can remember how to do everything in in reverse order so uh, command fest chicago i know we're not shooting on our normal day so i'm like my schedule's all off we're now. recording early because uh producer ryan has an event on wednesday so it's monday no, we don't throw any specific under the bus so just say we just have scheduling conflicts producer ryan has scheduling conflicts <laughs> <laughs> So we're recording on Monday, but this will be coming out on Wednesday. 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 So you have no interruption in quality podcasting. That's right. Right. And we're going to start reverse now. <laughs> and we're going to start with Command Fest Chicago. We're so gonna we want like to talk about... We're going to be like the stack and magic. Reverse. Reverse. First in, last out. FIFO. Right. So we'll... Yeah, let's do... Let's. This is um, magic podcast, the stack. I'm confused, but number five was you was were, on the stack last, so we're going with that one. Command Fest Chicago. How do you prepare for weekend events? Um, I get really anxious the night of, and usually don't sleep. Do and you I really? Usually, somehow end up doing well. I don't know. I I have this ritual of drink, you know, a, a bucket and a half of coffee. What it seems like, yeah. Um, and I'm just wired, uh, and then I try and eat periodically throughout the day, um. That's not really have to do with the preparation, but that's just like my you but know creature no, habit if, process. If you know that's what you're gonna do, you know you gotta have coffee at, at least. Yeah, for the I, I think the night before like a big event, like the last one I played in was uh, Grand Prix Detroit with me, with moi. It was and Team Chef Unified Petra. Modern. Yeah, I think I probably slept all of four hours that night. Really? Oh, I knew the team was gonna have to carry me along, so I slept like a baby. <laughs> we carried you like a baby. You did. I only won two games that day. <laughs> High five. In, embarrassingly enough, I played um, Boggles and uh, Boju. I played against humans four times. And <laughs> oh, that's right. That was on blue the white scene. control once. I beat humans once. Felt really good about it. And then I beat blue white control. Was really impressed that I didn't <laughs> have that uh, miracle that puts all my creatures on the bottom of the library because that gets you in does. Boggles. It's- no, don't have to worry about totem armor because it's at the bottom of the library. At the bottom, no, that's in the graveyard. <laughs> well, okay. Your creature's at the bottom and but it's a sad boggle. I managed to get there and that was that. But no. So preparing for an event, that, this came as a user submitted question. Wow. And Not by Twitter necessarily. N- no, it actually was in person. Really? Yeah, it was in person. So someone said, what do you do to prepare for an event that's coming up? So Command Fest Chicago is coming up. So what are we going to do, or I guess me, what am I going to do to prepare for Command Fest Chicago? The first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out how I'm going to bring all like 18 of my commander decks. 
how do you bring that many? I probably shouldn't bring like 18 decks, but we're driving. We're not flying. So I don't have to deal with like TSA. And then I can leave them at the hotel room. That's not, I don't have to bring them all to the hall every day. Cause that's going to be a really heavy backpack. Right. And the last time I was at, well, when we were at GP Detroit, actually I was at Magic Fest Detroit was the last event. I didn't play. I played some commander there, but yep. I didn't. Got compete. my ghost cradle. We got there. You got there. Um, I realized having a backpack that was too heavy really hurt, really hurt my shoulders. And that hurt for weeks. Having like eight decks in your backpack is really heavy. But I always bring lots of snacks. Yep. I to big find events. the bathroom that is the furthest from the convention center hall. Because there's less people there and less of a wait. So when we were at Kobo down in Detroit, uh, there TCF are... Center now, excuse you. Oh, yeah, it changed its name. Yeah. When we were there, I found like the furthest bathroom because it's there's like no one ever there, and that's great. And then did you find the the premium pooping stall, aka the handicap stall? No, no, you're not living life until you find that out. <laughs> Is there one at every? Do you think there's one of those everywhere? I would hope so. A premium one? Otherwise, you're going against municipality and state ordinance. Well, there's... there's, But you said premium. They might all just be meh. You think there's a premium bathroom stall in every... Well, even if the the premium, quote unquote, is it's not just clean. Premium, Maybe yeah. it's just clean. Really pres- like spotless. That's a premium. Yeah. That's what we call two owing life. Two owing like you need to give that janitor a high five yeah. after he washes his right. hands. Yeah. For keeping that bathroom well, pristine. After you wash your hands and you high five the janitor. Well, you're you haven't gone to the bathroom yet, I'm assuming. Oh. He came out and finished cleaning the bathroom and you're like, Oh, this is great. This is pristine. High five. You hoped he washed his hands. <laughs> but in my story, <laughs> you did both wash your hands. So mine So re- actually yours is better. So mine resolves first because reverse order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like your story better. And we both wash our hands, promoting a clean... And we do, like, the, the Flash Gordon. Like, well, not really Flash Gordon, but, like, any 80s movie where we just, like, all jump in the air and we just freeze and, and stay freeze. there. <laughs> yeah. Flash freeze. That happened. Yeah. And now we found the premium bathroom. We, so that that's on the list of things that you do to prepare for an event. We segued so hard. <laughs> so um, when yeah. you're going to an event... And I guess at least for this Command Fest Chicago, I want to make sure that I have a few different deck styles, right? So you want to have one that maybe is a a bit more competitive. Like you want to win at least one game, right? And then you want to have one that's casual so you can play with a bunch of people and not have everyone mad at you for playing like extra turns. Right. You don't want to be a multi-state enemy. Yeah. Or yeah, you're correct. (laughs) And you don't want to just play all infinite combos. And then you want to have probably a jank deck where everybody's like, Let's play this deck where I'm going to play this commander that does almost nothing, but no one ever sees any of these cards, so it'll be fun. So at least you want to have at least a, a range, an array of those three decks, right? I assume mm-hmm. so for a command fest. This, yep. is the fir- this is brand new. This is new to me. This is new to you all. That new, new. It got that new hotness. Mm-hmm. First event ever. I hope it goes off well. I will be in Chicago uh, that whole weekend. Uh, so for what a quinky dink. Fri- Friday saturday and sunday leaving sunday to drive home um but there's a lot of things going on they've got two headed giant commander so we're trying to figure out how we do that and that seems interesting and i i don't know if it's necessarily what else should i what am i forgetting to prepare for this event okay Uh, so you've got your clothes right so then you get your general packing stuff that you have to do right so you have clothes toothbrush don't forget your toothbrush and floss you never take a toothbrush though you always get the free hotel one no you don't those things are terrible and their toothpaste is never as good as your own toothpaste but i also bring my own shampoo i don't like using the shampoo from the hotel or the bar of soap that has like the the lotiony stuff in it because then you feel like you never actually got it off your skin because your skin feels like really like slick you know what i'm talking about no Oh, well, maybe that's just me. I like soap that just dries my skin right out. <laughs> mm, I right. use Dove and it just feels clean. You mean Duvet-E? Duvet-E. I use Dove and I use uh, the white bar. It smells great. You still use bar soap? I here. love bar soap. I like wasting half of a bottle of Axe just to wash myself <laughs> one time. <laughs> my Axe budget through the week is like... like. Do you use a loofah? Are you a loofah person? I do use a loofah. How often do you change your loofah? Like uh, once a month? I usually dry it out at least once a week. Okay. Um, you change it every like, yeah, like, a couple every times couple, a year. Yeah, like every couple of weeks, actually. Wow. 
Yeah. That's a lot of work to use a loofah. But Dude. I'm not going to bring a loofah to Command Fest Chicago. I have my essentials, just your normal essentials, right? For a vacation. So you got to pack that. Wait, so you check that your, off the list. Are you going to pack your Dove chocolates? No. Got to count those calories. Those are great though. You could go with dark chocolate. That's, that's the only way to go. Honestly, dark chocolate. The ones like filled with peanut butter. Filled mm. with, I haven't found the ones that are filled with raspberry in years. Those are the best. Anyway. So now we got, right. We got snacks for the car ride for the road trip road trip i'm bringing my switch this year because luigi's mansion comes out on halloween luigi's mm-hmm. mansion three and we're leaving on halloween to drive out there because it's the day after halloween awesome but we don't get kids at our house anyway to pass out candy so not a big deal yep. right so now i got my car i got the road trip prepared got snacks Be prepared. got video games got disney now music the jams okay so now we're at command fest and i have snacks last time last time um guest host <laughs> <laughs> Mike Coyle bought a container of fancy cashews to bring with him. <laughs> that and those like um <clears throat> like the really they're like the sourdough pretzels, you know what I'm talking about? Those really yeah. huge pretzels. Yep. And I think I picked up I got beef jerky. <laughs> I think I got those like beef and cheese packs, to, like those <laughs> beef and cheese packs. Those are really good to bring to an event like that cuz they're just they're just um it, uh, like vacuum sealed those are really good oh okay yeah. and they, they make it so you're not starving but I do not like getting food at those halls like pizza or I, like a burger that's like $14 and I not that like, great not to be too TMI but every time I eat like a hall of food hold I'm on like, this feels a little a little TMI I'm like backed up gross so just it doesn't sit well with you you could have said that too I like sitting well <laughs> it just but sits food well. Yeah, but all <laughs> oh food. Oh my god! But <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Well, I don't eat. A, I generally try not to. Or they have those like refrigerated sandwiches, and they're terrible. But well, so good. No, <laughs> terrible isn't like of, the bread full is, of sodium. <laughs> yeah, well, I I don't worry about my sodium. I probably you're have a, way too much. You're sodium. not a sodium wizard. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh-oh. I just made that up right now. It was a really good joke. Loved it. Sick well, burn. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't necessarily a joke, is more just to confuse you because you believe me at first. <laughs> it's like a salt wizard. Is this salt, a card? It's a salt wizard. It's salt. like time wizard from Yu Gi Oh! But so, salt wizard. So salty. Instead of, instead of a clock wand, he has a, a salt wand. It's made out of salt stone. I don't know that reference. What, time wizard? What's that from? Yu Gi Oh! He was just a big clock and he had a clock. Oh, I do. I do remember that now. That was only like 15 years ago or whatever. Yeah. When Hashtag episode, old. When that episode came out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's how I prepare. I hope to bring all the decks that I think are fun and uh, we're going to have a good time. Having if a you, good time. If, having a good time. If you have uh, tips and tricks uh, of preparing. Uh, for, I'm sorry. I just keep interrupting you I'm with my beautiful music. I'm a super... Okay, so... Super sp- onto you. That was Can't my... Can't stop me. Can't stop me. Yeah, hoo, hoo. That was the song... That was my senior song that we graduated to. Can't, Are you serious? Uh, is it Don't Stop Me Now? Don't Stop Me Now. Yeah, that was the song we graduated to. That's much better than our graduation song. That's it what was, I heard. It was Bittersweet Symphony, which beautiful song doesn't really go with graduation because it's a song about suicide. At least it wasn't the song Graduation by Vitamin C. Fair enough. Because that's a, that's a cliche. <laughs> we have an unset that's coming out in February of 2020. Unsanctioned comes out this winter. Because yes, winter. winter is February. I'm not saying spring. Like I messed up a few weeks ago talking about future sets. Um, it's uh, like, it's actually a box set. So it's not a full set. Um, that it smells awfully close to CCG rather than TCG collectible card game yeah. instead of trading card game right. so it says unsanctioned is a pre-constructed silver bordered experience <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says so it says it contains 16 brand new uncards to trip your untrigger and <laughs> plus the reprinting of beloved uncards from previous unsets it's unbelievable oh wait they did say that here well i didn't get the joke here i guess but <laughs> I thought I was funny earlier. I guess I'm not. Um, it says it also comes with. <laughs> I'm dying over. <laughs> oh, Ryan or um, Brian is really enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, un- unsanctioned, 
un- unsanctioned. unsanctioned unsanctioned also comes with a new full art black bordered basic land um basic lands that will do the online proud um with a new unstyle and new art uh each unsanctioned comes with the following so each copy of it it's like a box set so five 30 card decks two sixty two six-sided dice ten double-sided tokens 10 full art basic lands, five regular and five premium, and one reusable box. Reusable. Well, I don't know if you're just going to, I assume you're just going to put all the decks back in the box. And that's what you're going to use it for multiple times. I mean, I guess you could take it out and use it for other things. Who just would take, who just, but it's just a cardboard who box. Did, who just takes the deck out and then plays it and puts it back in the box? What kind of monster is that? Uh, to be fair, I do have the Commander Anthology 2 set, and I actually put all the decks back inside those little boxes, back inside the full box you're a monster it's good for storage that was a very good throne of eldraine reference in don't shrek tell, don't tell him anything so it says unsanctioned will be available worldwide in english and will be available in local game stores Wait. mass market stores and online it does not mention anything other than english here i don't know what you're gonna do brian label me uninterested Un- oh that was a good one <laughs> yeah so um but it'll be available can't stop me now available in local game stores mass market stores and online so that's exciting i do like the unsets i wish they were um uh, uh legal in in commander maybe not all of them but i don't think they would all be broken in commander there are some fun cards that do some ridiculous things i wish they would make Urza's head legal Honestly, I kind of do too, because you can go to that website, click the button and see so many other um, Planeswalker abilities that never get used (laughs) because you never really want it. Well, no, during Mono Red October right now, you are supposed to play that the original Tibble and you're supposed to always plus it. No. Okay. Yeah. So, but yes, the original Tibble is likely the, the one commander that doesn't ever get used. That's that for that set. We also have the game night um, set. The deck lists were announced this week. Oh yeah. So the today on the mothership, aka dailymtg.com, was announced that on November sixteenth, um, the two thousand nineteen game night set um, set would be released. Um, it's marketed as an out of box, ready to play multiplayer experience, and it will include five new cards, one for each color. So many new experiences. I know unset was an experience <laughs> game Dude, nights is an experience doesn't it, like their marketing lately doesn't it sound like college graduation with new experiences new <laughs> that's just college in general that's true a new experience no one no one a asks your whole new experience it's marketed as an out of the box ready to play multiplayer experience yeah okay so there's new- who is this for who is the game nights for i'm just um, curious is this for new I, players for people who are looking for just a casual night of magic, I actually don't know who they're marketing this to. It's an enchanted evening of casual magic play. I would, is that I, you? Is that how you would market it, market this? Sure. I mean, it's a, a. It's coming out two months before Christmas, so it'd be a great starter set for any kid who is like, I want to play magic. Sure. Or or it's just like you know for old old fogies like us, you know, just like. You know, I'm tired of playing my Urza commander and, you know, whomping on everybody else at the game night. Do you play Urza as a commander? I don't. I disguise it as Psy. I, I've i never even... I played against the Urza deck one time. Was it miserable? Cause it always... No, because all three people went against the Urza player immediately and then they didn't do anything. So oh, nice. I've never experienced the full force. The full might of Urza. Um so the f- the five new cards uh, is the the white one is High Cliff Felidar, which costs five and two white. is a cat beast with vigilance. When High Cliff Felidar enters the battlefield for each opponent, choose a creature with the greatest power amongst creatures that player controls. Destroy those creatures, and it is a five five. So these are specifically multiplayer cards, which is very cool. Yeah, I like these. Um, the blue one is Sphinx of Enlightenment, four and two blue, flying. When Sphinx of Enlightenment enters the battlefield, target opponent draws a card, and you draw three cards. And oh. it's a 5-5 five, five Sphinx. Also a 5-5. Five, five. Hey, I'm actually, th- Oh, no, um, they're not all 5-5s. Five Can't even shortcut. Keep going. Dang it. All right, so the the, the black is a Calculating Lich, uh, which is four colorless, two black, zombie wizard, menace when a creature attacks one of your opponents, that player loses one life. Also 5-5. Five, five. That player 
the player's controller or that player? Oh, it's that, that player. player yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the red is four and two red. It's called Fiendish du- Duo. It's a devil. First strike. If an opponent would deal damage to... I'm sorry. If a source would deal damage to an opponent and deals double that damage to that player instead. I'll this one is probably going to be used a lot in Commander, actually. Yeah. I mean, every red... It's great. Every red Commander, I feel like that's popular, is almost... Dictate of the Twin Gods. Exactly. But on a 5-5 five, five creature. Her- the the first strike. Wrath. Um, yeah, Furnace Wrath. Yep. Yeah. Earthstraker Giant is the green one. F- uh, four colorless, two green. It is a giant druid. 6-6. Six, six, the only one that's big. <laughs> yep. I guess 5-5 yeah. five, is not small, but this one's the biggest one. <laughs> and it has Trample. When Earthstraker Giant enters the battlefield, other creatures control get plus three, plus three, and gain Trample until end of turn. So overrun. For Literally overrun on the creature and cost one more. Field. Yeah. So if you can do infinite blinks with like... Um, What's the what's the cat from the the cons block? Like you pay one and a green and you bounce something to your hand. Oh, um, uh, team or saber tooth. Team or saber tooth. Yeah. If you can just find a way to make lots of mana and bounce it like two or three times, I mean, you could do that with infinite mana, but then you're, I mean, that's you're yeah. doing infinite. But if you can do bounce that a few times, that's real good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good in like y- Yarick with Yarick's ability. Everything oh. gets plus six plus six, and double trample. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um gross but all of these are uh all these decks i won't go over all of them but they'll have at least uh let's see one two looks like like three or four rares in each um and there all seem to be cards printed within the last let's say a couple of years um so it's kind of like a reprints esque um yeah a a cultivated game night, essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. Should be fun. I bought the last one. Yeah. I had fun playing that. And some of those cards were really good in Commander, so. I feel like a lot of, not a lot of people, I feel like some people bought them for Commander, but if um, it's just also a good casual, even playing field for all players to play, so. I mean, I bought the Brawl deck so that I could play Commander. Yeah. Full Commander. Yeah. I mean, the Brawl decks, I mean, I'll, pl- I'll play Brawl a few times, but I bought them to play Commander. It's yeah. the only way you can get them right now, unless you're buying singles. I uh, ordered a Corval. Oh, the, the in Japanese. Yeah, they finally yeah. came way down in price. So. Oh, good. They are affordable. Um, Mythic Championship Five is coming this Friday. Really, October 18th, and the deck lists have been posted, and uh, the deck lists might not surprise you. Um, we have <laughs> a lot of Golos um actually 43 percent of the decks are golos in two different archetypes so uh bant golos at 33.8 percent and um golos fires fires of invention 8.4 percent so there's two different versions there yep um the next most popular deck type though um i guess archetype is simic food 16.2 percent that is also a good deck and then rounding out the um Top six is Golgari Adventure, Bant Ramp, and then Gruel Aggro. Everything else after that is uh, not high enough to have sum up. Yeah, top. sum up into other. Yeah, Frank Frank Karsten did a, a breakdown of the meta game um, last oh, last week. His articles are great. So some some fun facts, some interesting eye opening items that he had pointed out was um, Once Upon a Time is the most played card among all of the sixty eight deck lists with one hundred and sixty nine copies. We'll have yeah, we'll have a little bit more of that for the modern portion of Star City. Yeah, for sure. Uh, followed by Hydrate Crisis at one hundred and fifty six copies, Growth Spiral at one thirty eight. Um, so there's a lot of that, but I believe that the um, one of the most I guess. One of the cards that people are looking at right now is um, Hydroid Crisis because it's just Sphinx of Re- yeah Sphinx of Revelation on a creature kind of less color intensive and can't be countered. I mean the creature itself can be, but, but the the, the effect ability. itself cannot. You will gain that incremental life, and you well, will unless gain... you have like a cast somehow get rid of a tra- cast trigger. Is there a stifle in standard right now? Yeah, not in standard, but I'm just is saying. there not? Is no tails end is a legendary creature. Is no, no uh, disallows gone, right? Yeah, disallows no, no longer. Slime, no squelch. If there, there is one and we're missing it, tweet at us at Guardian Pod or at Ballerman Cometh. You could just tweet at Brian. Sure. I'm gonna take all the credit. Yeah, you take all <laughs> the credit for this. <laughs> um, so. 
um, one of the things that they had mentioned that the Frank Carson mentioned was that um, what stands out is the dominance of Field of the Dead at 33.8%. Uh, Bant Golos is by far the most popular deck here. Um, but I thought what was most interesting was that only six decks of all of the 68 didn't register a forest. Oh, yeah. So Very green heavy meta. We are right now. I did see, I was looking at a few of the deck lists. So they are all posted online at wizards.com. Um, you can find those. Um, there, there is a red black sacrifice deck. I, I haven't seen much of that, but I assume that there are a lot of people out there since this is going to be a mythic championship that is on arena. A lot of people will be able to tune into this one. Um, yeah, I guess on, well, you could tune into the rest, but this one is just on arena. So you're seeing that, but on, on Twitch, um, is this BO one or BO three? Ha hey, you stink. It's, it's gotta be best of three. There's sideboards submitted on all of them. So I'm going to assume best of three. Okay. Well, you'll be able to find um, the Mythic Championship this Friday, October 18th, online at twitch.tv forward slash magic. What else we got? Or we're on our last, we're on the last item that went on the stack first now, which Ooh. is all of the, the, what happened this weekend? What happened this weekend? Two things. Two things. Oh, okay. Two. Is it drama? No. I just like saying it that way because it builds up. Oh, suspense. So, so everyone will wait to the Sus- end to find out. Yeah. yeah, we're doing... Okay. So the the first uh, hap- actually happened on Thursday, but I still include that because that's like the biggest bar night for people who go to, who work in an office. So we're still including that in the weekend. Okay. Um, I work in an office. Yeah, there you go. Um, was the fandom... <laughs> See, you can relate. You're the target audience for this joke. <laughs> um, was the Fandom Legends. That actually continued um, uh, their once a week event with, uh, it's an invitation only event um, with 16 pros, Swiss, and then they do a playoff of eight people. Uh, was won this past week by Martin Juza, also known as Juzum Jin on uh, Twitter. What was he playing? He was playing Red Deck Wins or Mono Red. Whatever, whatever you want to call classic. It. He's playing red. Yeah, classic. Easy, much. easy to, easy to understand for the most part, but very difficult to pilot in most cases. I feel like you're talking about the, an alcoholic beverage. Alcohol is easy to understand but difficult to pilot. I could take that argument. All right, fair enough. I accept it. Um, he won it in a field of three fire invention Golo stacks. Um, a mono blue arc light phoenix deck, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, Golgari aggro and gruel aggro. Um, mono blue with a red card featured. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna blow your mind even more. Is this actually, um, Demir, uh, base oh. color? Yeah, it's blue black. Um, this one was like the most intriguing to me because A, it doesn't have Golos in it or Once Upon a Time in it. Just playing, um... Top of the list in interest. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> you love this. I do. Okay, so... It... Let me bring it up, bring it out. This is good podcasting. Bring, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Okay. It's brought up. Mm-hmm. So it's a 16 island, 4 grave, watery grave. And then the creatures are Arclight Phoenix. Mar- what? Okay, what are you playing in black? I'm getting that. There's only this f- is quality, quality of podcasting. So uh, Merfolk uh, Secret Keeper is, it's a, an adventure card. The adventure portion, uh, adventure sorcery is Venture Deeper, which is target player puts the top four cards um, of their library into the graveyard, and that's a 0-4 creature. This is the Mono Blue Self Mill deck. Yeah. Okay. Then it plays um, Drone Secrets. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards of the library in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and keep milling yourself. And then it also plays... You ready for what the black is for? Yeah. Do you know what it is? No, I actually don't. I have actually played against the mono blue part of this, and I've never seen black. Um, so it's uh, for the dispersal part of Discovery Dispersal. Okay. And Creeping Chill. Creeping Chill is when it hits your graveyard, you can X on it and an opponent loses three life, you gain three life. Mm-hmm. So like a portion of dredge. So it's not going to thought seize me on, or not thought seize, thought erasure me on turn two, three, and possibly also on four to Always try to fails. get a scoop never, out of me. Never, never fails. Never fails if you're playing thought erasure, having that on uh, two, three, and four, but. Yeah. 
Um, and then it plays the Ashia guys. How do they win? Um, what do they Arc- win with? Arclight Phoenix. Um, them to death and probably an Amiibo as well. Okay. Incremental. So you are swinging. You have to swing. Yeah. You're not milling your opponent. You have to actually win through combat yeah. damage. Right. What happens if... I mean, you can technically mill them, but like that seems not... You're supposed to do it to yourself so you can get your narco amoebas and stuff in the graveyard right. to come out into play. I mean, then you play Maximize Altitude, which is a... What is that? Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until I'm starting jumpstart one blue sorcery. Oh, because you can discard a card to make it happen. Right. Okay. Um, unsummon. I'm assuming it's to unsummon your um, Merfolk Seeker Keeper. To mill four again. Right. Yeah. It's a zero four defender otherwise. It's not that great. Yeah, mission briefing just uh, kind of jumps, basically jumpstart all of your spells are in it that you mill and or just You just play. put it back in your hand with that, right? Or do you cast it from your graveyard? You cast it from your graveyard. Oh, okay. It's yep. a flashback. Sure. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Um, well, I guess you surveil too, but uh, also a decent synergy with Drowned Secrets. Um, and then uh, Golos continues to dominate everything, every standard event that's in. There's three But it was copies. only three in the top eight. At least it wasn't like five oh, or six. That's still, or seven. Hold on. Like last is that, week. Is that the 43% metric? Let's see. Eight. Oh, it's under that 30, 38% of top eight was some form of Golos. Yeah, that's a lot. Yep. That is a lot. Um, so this one was the, the fires of invention version, which plays, which splashes red for fires of invention. Cause you ramp and then you can play any spell for, or two spells basically per turn, um, for free. As long as it, the converted mana cost is equal to or less than the number of lands you have in play. Um, so the turn also, you play it though, if you play it as your second spell, you can't play anymore. If you play as your first spell, you can only play one more spell, right? Right. Um, so then, uh, people are probably like, Andy, if you just read the card, it explains that. I did not need you to explain that to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Andy's here for. Reading the card it explains the card. RTC. Read the card. RTFC was our team last year. Read Re- the read the f-ing card. Read the f-ing card. Actually, that does work really well for you. Yeah. But that was our team name for the last uh, GP, GP Detroit. Read the f-ing card. We had a lot of people give us a lot of compliments. We would sit down, we'd shake hands, introduce ourselves, and be like, I like your shirt. Thanks. Because I have to look at all your cards because I don't know I like, how modern works. Right. I like the um, the guys who actually had also team shirts were like the only other people who had like designated design um, and they t-shirts. weren't like they weren't like a t-shirt from like their local store. It was like an actual, they made the design themselves. Yeah. Anyway, let's let it wrap this segment no. up so Andy no, can No, no, you can just finish. Just keep going. I just don't have to talk anymore. Just mark this so I don't say all this. They don't have to know that I left early. Yeah, go, 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 go. Go, Los. Go, 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 Los. Um, so that wraps up the Fandom Legends. We're going to move on to, the, uh, I guess, the bigger event, which was the Star City Modern Open down in Indianapolis, um, which was won by Drake Sasser playing Gift Storm. Um it's funny that he uh, won in a field of Once Upon a Time, which seems to be also taking over Modern. Um, uh, it's Once Upon a Time is played as a four of in most Amulet Titan decks now, as well as some Death Shadow variants. Um, the top eight included the sto- the deck that eventually won, which is Storm, two Amulet Titan, Burn, Drun's De- Death Shadow, Urza's Ascendancy Combo, Green White Eldrazi Tron, and Dredge. Um, and let's actually go over. Um, so day two actually had a pretty diverse field. Day two conversion rate, um, or metagame was Amulet Titan was not Amulet Titan, John, and Urza Ascendancy all had uh, right around nine percent of the current meta. Um, and then uh, Mono Green Tron and Burn both had eight percent. Are you finally around with me, Ryan? I um, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. Andy kind of yeah. had to go, so we'll, we'll, just, we'll just wing it from here. Yeah, Andy dipped out without saying anything, yeah. which I think is a little rude. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get him next week. We'll get him so good. And then second place we had with, uh, was Amulet Titan played by, um, Titan played by Will Pulliam, who's actually um, on Twitter known as Weird Land Guy. Um, he is a master of this deck. Um, and he was playing four copies of Once Upon a Time and Summoner's Pact. Um, so getting his Primeval Titan, not so hard. Right? For sure. Yeah. Hell totally. yeah. Heck yeah. 
I, I don't know. I'm not you good. got nothing on Howie Mandel or no, anything no, like No, no, I'm not good at this part. I need Andy for this part. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at the sign-offs. Um, well, we're glad everyone joined us this week. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we're sorry. This is it's not... A week. I made you all come in two days early. Yeah. I feel like it's my fault. No, it's, no it's, we're all good. We're all good. We, we adjust when we, we adapt. Over, adapt, overcome, improvise. Is that what it is? And Bear Man Grills. Yeah, 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 hell yeah, heck yeah! Dang it, he's not here to censor me. I'm just, I'm just so off today. I think hell's fine. It's right. Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, I think that'll pretty much do it for this week's episode. We apologize for uh, quality control. We were just kind of like had to rush everything together, but. Um, Anyway, thank you all for listening. You're all the best. If you'd like to contact us on Twitter, you can find our podcast on Twitter at GuardianPod. You can find Andy at ATFlory and me, Brian, at BowlermanCometh. Also, take a look for the hashtag GuardianProd uh, Project Pod to find our posts and episodes. I'd like to hear from you to send it along your comments and any topics you'd like us to talk about. We will go over those on the next episode. You can email us at GuardianProjectPod at gmail.com. This is Brian, a.k.a. BowlermanCometh, signing off. Bye. Bye. I've never got to do that. Yeah, that's not good. To be part of it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Woo. That felt. So you've never done the end part. I don't know. Well, I feel complete in my life now. What a short episode.